What's up everyone, welcome back to the mini vlog and in this week we're gonna remove the armrest out of your Mini Cooper, making a lot more space for your center console right here. So go ahead and hit like and subscribe if you haven't already and let's get started with this. You can get some of these parts that we're gonna use today at outmordering.com. So when you go there, use my code MBL5 for 5% off your entire order at checkout. Thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to the install. Okay, to start the removal process, we gotta remove a couple of things. And we're gonna start in the back here at the cup holder and then move up to the gear shift selector and the iDrive system. So we're gonna go ahead and start back here, show you the steps as we work our way to remove this old armrest and put in the delete. Okay, to start, we're gonna remove the cup holder in the back. And to do that, we're gonna pop out these little uh, plastic caps. Uh, they're not really caps, they're actually the bolts that hold on the cup. So just use a plastic pry tool and work your way around and we're gonna pop that out and you'll see that's what's holding in the rear cup holder. So we'll remove both of those on each side. Okay, we got both sides off. Next, we need to remove the uh, little rubber uh, liner of this cup holder and that will reveal to us a screw down here. Okay, now that that's loose, we should just lift straight up. So now we got the cup holder out of the way. We have three more T20s to get. We got one on top and then one on each side. So let's go ahead and remove those. Next step is to get the arm, actual armrest out of the way. And to do that, we're going to, you can see the seam here. We're gonna take the plastic covering off of there. Those will be some bolts we can use to get that out of the way. Ones that have wireless charging on the inside will have some wires. This one doesn't, so we don't have to worry too much about wires in the way. Let's go ahead and remove that. So to get this, you can start by just lifting up at the bottom and it'll start to pry open these. Pull off the front. And then if we rotate this, the back should also come off relatively easily. Just a few clips. So there's our back, there's our front, those are out of the way. We now have full access to the armrest itself and these two bolts that hold it in. We got the plastic covers off, we can now remove the armrest itself. It's held in by a 13 uh, mil bolt on the front and the back. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those. After those are removed, you should just be able to lift the armrest out of the way. Now remember, if you have a wireless charger in your armrest, there's gonna be a lot of wires you're gonna to need to disconnect first, and there'll be a clip down there to disconnect it. This one, however, does not have it, so it's an easy, just lift it out of the way. So after we get the armrest out of the way, there is a bolt underneath there, it's another T20, so we'll go ahead and remove that. And then next up, we'll move on uh, up here to the gear selector and the iDrive controller. We'll move the trim pieces of those and get those bolts out of the way. Okay, we're gonna start on the iDrive. So to get that started, we're gonna get a trim removal tool and we're gonna pop off this cover. We'll start in the back and just pop it up. And that pops out pretty quickly. And then we have access to the uh, two screws that hold in the iDrive module. So we'll remove the two T20 screws out of the back. So to remove the iDrive controller, we've got the two screws removed. We're just gonna lift up the back a little bit and then slide it back. There's a little metal clip that holds it in the front. So once that's out, we can then go ahead and get the back side and go ahead and unplug it. So we're not gonna remove the cable just yet, but when we do remove this center console, we're gonna route this cable through this little access hole in the front. We're gonna leave it there for now and just remove this gigantic bolt that's hidden underneath the iDrive controller. So next, we'll remove the bolt underneath the iDrive controller. It appears to be a T30 down there, so we'll go ahead and remove that. Okay, so next we can remove the uh, gear selector uh, boot, and you can use a trim removal tool, or also you can just kind of pull with your hand up. It's just a little clip on each side. You can see the clip right there. Pull that up out of the way. Now we have access to all the bolts we need down there. Okay, we got the shifter boot out of the way. The next thing we need to do is get this clip out of the way, and to do that, we're gonna push in on each side, uh, kind of squeeze those together and then we're gonna pull up after we do that. So squeeze the two and then pull up. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we've lifted uh, this out of the way. It took a bit of prying. You gotta squeeze those top two clips really hard together and then maybe pry up, which now exposes this connector. Now we're gonna remove the uh, cable that's uh, connecting it and you're just gonna push in that little clip right there in and then lift this uh, connector. So we've got this cable disconnected now. It's a little tough. You gotta squeeze those clips here on the side. You can see them better this way. Squeeze those in so you can pull straight up. Now our gear selector is completely uh, disconnected electronically from here. Now we need to remove it. Pry on it. So to remove it, you're just gonna use a little pry tool uh, to remove that clip and uh, get it up out of the way. And now we have much more space to lift this uh, center console thing out of the way. All right, next for the e-brake, all we need to do is lift it up in the engaged position so it's out of the way. And then this uh, boot dust cover is just gonna be held in by two clips. So we'll go ahead and remove those just by kind of pulling on them a little bit. There we go. 
Okay, so the next thing we're going to do in order to get to the screws at the front of this air console, which are hidden underneath this kick plate panel, I just kind of move the kick plate panel just a little bit out of the way. There's a screw back there that's holding it in. I don't think we need to get that uh, undone in order to just kind of pull this out. So just a few clips, so we'll pry it out. And that should give us plenty of access to that screw that we need. So we don't need to really remove this entire kick plate. Get to that screw, unscrew that, and we'll be able to go on to the next step. Okay, we've got everything unscrewed at this point. The cup holder, the armrest, the e-brake, the iDrive controller, the shifter, and the front all have been had their bolts removed. And now the next step is to just get this cable um, through its routing hole so we don't get, rip it out when we're pulling this uh, center console out. So we'll just remove it from its little clips holding it in place. Nothing too hard there. And then we'll slowly feed it down a little bit into that hole. Gives us a little more safety so we don't break that. And now we can pull the center console out. We're gonna go ahead and lift it up. Make sure your e-brake is up out of the way as far as you can. And we started by just tucking that boot down into the hole first. So we can go ahead and start at the back and just lift it straight up and then slide it back a little bit. Go ahead, Rich. Go. There we go. Okay, so here we got the new one unboxed, and as you can see right here, where the armrest would have been, it's been deleted. So the rest looks the same, uh, and the part number, if you're curious for it, is your part number. You can get it. It's an official BMW OEM piece, uh, so you can get that and order your own and use this video to help you install it. Okay, so here we have the two parts side by side, and you can see the difference here. They look, they look identical from the uh, front, but we work our way to the back of the center console and you can see the difference here. Here's the new one with the delete. It doesn't have any spot to have an armrest installed. Here is the original one. It has a spot for the armrest to be installed using those 13 mil bolts and then one little uh, T20 that goes here to hold the center console in. So we're not gonna have those reinstalled. We're gonna have three bolts left over and we're gonna install this new one with that armrest delete there. And that's really this, this, this piece right here. So before we can install the center console, we do need to remove the uh, armrest bracket. We forgot about that. That will be in the way if we don't get this out of the way and we'll be able to put the center console on there. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that and set it aside. It looks like it's held in with four beefy, I would say 13 mil bolts. We'll find out and we'll let you know. Okay, now we got that uh, unbolted. We can lift out this bracket. And it is connected to the cup holder bracket. Don't remove that, leave that there. You're gonna want that for your cup holder. Here's our bracket, get that out of the way. We'll go ahead re-bolt uh, down that cup holder and we'll put those other bolts just back where they were so that they're in the spot they belong and we'll install that new center console. Okay, so we've got that bracket out of the way. We put those bolts back on the cup holder. That's very important to have that cup holder bracket there because your center console does screw into the sides of that. So there's a big old gap there now. We should be able to slide our center console with the armrest delete onto here right as the same way as we took out the old one. Okay, the hardest part is probably getting the boot through that hole. And also don't forget to take your iDrive cable and we're gonna route it through this little hole right in the iDrive well. Let's see if I can get that. There we go. And we will tuck it into the cable routing clips down there, like that. Okay, so we've got the front screwed back in. We can pop these uh, kick panels back into their little clips. So it's just a real nice, quick push. You know, here it's snap into place. So before we put the iDrive back in, we gotta put our T30 bolt back in here, which uh, holds the center console down underneath the iDrive controller unit. So we'll put that in there and we'll just tighten it up. Okay, so our T30's back in. Now we're ready for the iDrive uh, control unit and we're gonna plug in the wiring harness, slip the front underneath the metal clip and then we'll put the two bolts to hold it in the back. snap the trim ring back into place. It only goes one way, so we'll put the uh, clip at the back, slide it in, and just push down hard. You'll hear it clip into place. Next up, we're gonna do the gear selector, and again, we're gonna plug the clip back in, put the weird clip 
wiring harness holder back into place and uh, put the boot back down. And now we can slide the actual selector down by kind of pushing it down until we hear it snap into place. Let's go ahead and put the e-brake dust boot back in. There are two clips on the front and one little one in the back. I think it probably makes sense to put the back in first and then slide the two front clips in. We're almost done. We have three T20s to go. We got one on each side and then one up here at the top. We'll install those and we'll be ready to install the cup holder and consider this project done. Now we're ready for the cup holder. We're gonna get our cup holder, and again, it's got a T20 at the top, and then kind of just clips into the sides and has uh, three plastic, or two plastic clips on each side. So we're gonna go ahead and slide that into place. Set that in there. Now we have the two plastic clips on each side. We're just gonna push those back in. And that's it. That's it, we have uh, removed the armrest from the center console. We now have this new center console with a lot more space um, and it's a pretty easy process to do. You can probably do it yourself in about an hour, an hour and a half without too much trouble. So if you're interested in doing that yourself, we'll leave the part numbers down below and hopefully this video helps you uh, along through the process. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, when you see other minis out there, don't forget to wave. I will catch you in the next one.